Here at Fayette County Reservoir, we have Mike McClelland on the water answering some of the most common questions he hears when it comes to crankbait fishing. You know, one thing about it, I mean, time of year isn't that big of a deal when it comes to crankbait fishing. I mean, almost every month of the year, somewhere in the United States, you're gonna be able to catch fish on crankbaits. It's uh, all a matter of uh, the action you choose, you know, how deep the fish are, what you wanna be looking for when you're cranking. So, you know, we're here in uh, Central Texas right now, gonna get out and uh, play around with two or three different crankbaits today. One of the biggest things that you've gotta do when you're throwing a crankbait is figure out for the style of crankbait you're throwing, what the best way to retrieve that bait's gonna be. Sometimes a faster retrieve will keep it, you know, bouncing off the top of the rocks. And then there's other times that you may need to slow that retrieve down to just kind of keep that bait hovering over the rock. There's one right there. See how that fish bit right when I speed it, sped it up. I mean, that's the whole thing is you've got to let the fish tell you what they want. I'd been winding that bait fairly slow and about the time I got it to the boat, I sped it up just a little bit thinking my cast was over and that's when he got it. Pretty nice little fish. He doesn't have the bait very good, but a pretty nice one. Not bad at all. Little Spro Rock Crawler 50 got it done. That's the Missouri Craw color. And uh, you know, it's just one of those deals you've got to be aware of what's going on when you're throwing a crankbait. So many people make that mistake of just chunking it out, winding it back to the boat, and never putting any action or any uh, variance in their retrieve. Good note. Whenever I'm throwing a crankbait, probably 80% of the time, maybe even 90% of the time, I'm gonna be throwing it on Sunline Crank FC. You know, there's those certain situations where you may throw monofilament. Some guys may even throw braid occasionally, but if you're one of those guys that wants to throw braid, I would definitely recommend going from like an SX braid to a Crank FC to give yourself a little bit more stretch. That's the biggest thing you wanna do when you're throwing a crankbait is you want line that has some stretch in it. And when you tie a crankbait directly to braid, it is so, you know, it just doesn't have any stretch and it doesn't give those fish that ability to suck the bait in like they need to suck it in. You know, one of the questions I get asked tons throughout the course of the year, you know, whether I'm at a lake fishing or I'm doing seminars, is how do you determine what color you're gonna throw? And I mean, it doesn't just pertain to, to plastics or crankbaits, it's across the board. But one of the biggest things that I'm gonna do as an angler is, is first I'm gonna to try to analyze in my mind what are the fish predominantly feeding on. I mean, that's gonna be the number one key thing for me when I start dictating color. If I truly feel like the fish are feeding on crawfish and brim, I wanna throw colors that resemble crawfish and brim. You know, and then there's going to be days that you break down those different colors based upon the conditions of the day. But then there are those situations where you have to consider what do the crawfish look like. You know, anytime you go to Texas, you better be throwing something red. The, the main reason for that is, is early in the spring, the crawfish in Texas are red. And that's the reason fish want to eat that color. But when you go to other lakes, you know, a Table Rock, a Bull Shoals, there's certain times of the year where our crawfish get a lot of purple. They've got browns and they've got grays in them. And you want to match the hatch of that bait as well as you can to the body of water you're fishing. There's one right there, that's a good one. You know, one of the biggest things about a crankbait fish is making sure that you don't put too much pressure on them. I mean, I can see that fish isn't hooked very good. I mean, I'm gonna run a fairly light drag all the time when I'm fighting a fish on a crankbait, even to the point where if that fish wants to run, I can just pull line a little bit. You can see right now, I'm just feeding that fish some line. Generally, if you don't rush a fish on a crankbait, you're not gonna lose them very often. But when you let them jump, that's usually when they get you. I mean, that fish is barely hooked. A good one though. Stay down, stay down. I think I got another hook in him then. Now that isn't a giant, but that is a Texas bass. Remember I talked about earlier throwing that red in Texas early in the spring? Caught that one on red crawl. Man, I love to catch him on a rock crawler. You know, another real key to fishing a crankbait this time of the year is the uh, 
not just how you fight a fish, but the actual action of your rod. I mean, when you look at the rod that I'm using right now, I mean, it's got a lot of flex, a lot of bend in it. And, uh, you know, when any time the water temperature's below, I'm going to say like 65 or 70 degrees, I'm going to be throwing a relatively slow gear ratio reel. I mean, I'm throwing right now a 6-3 to 1. There's times that even a 5 to 1 gear ratio reel is a good way to go. Caught that one on a little RK-50. I just keep mixing it up. You know, I feel like that red color, orange color is key. But, um, you know, it's, it's all about speed. It's about where you throw the bait, what de depth you're throwing it at and uh, you can catch a ton of fish on a crankbait. <laughs> the biggest thing you as an angler have got to do is make sure you're throwing the right crankbait for the right situation. I mean, when you're talking about catching them in zero to three foot of water, you're going to be throwing a square bill of some kind. If you're talking about catching them in that mid-depth range, you've got to be throwing a bait that dives at that depth range. And when you get out to that, you know, ultra deep stuff, I mean, a bait like, uh, the little John DD, the deepest diving DD, and now he's even got a deeper diving DD that, uh, you know, will get 20, 22 foot deep. You know, you start talking about long line and guys catch fish on crankbaits 25 and 30 foot deep. So a crankbait will catch him at about any depth if you can get the bait to where the fish are living. You know, there's a lot of things uh, when you look at what all these electronics will do today that you just kind of, there's a fish right there. You kind of take it for granted. I mean, they're so good now that there's not a ton of stuff that you have to do. But there's one thing when it comes to setting up my sonar that I still want to do, and that is I typically always want to run my gain in manual. It's just one of those things that to me makes a huge difference. A little fish interrupted our little discussion about electronics, didn't he? Eat that little rock collar 50. Pretty dad gum good. Not a nice one. <laughs> so getting back to the electronics, I mean, I want to run it in manual. And the other thing I always want to do is I want to have my A scope on. When you look at this unit right here, anything that you're seeing between this line and the beginning of the history is actually there. That is live sonar. Everything from here over is memory. So I always want my live scope or my A scope running, and I always want to make sure I'm running my gain in manual. The reason I do that is when you get around to other boats, your unit will actually try to start adjusting itself down automatically because of the interference. If I'm running mine in manual, I know I'm going to see every target that I want to see in the water. Another one right there. I mean, they have decided to eat. Front starting to come in. They have decided to eat. Hear that drag slipping? It's all about not putting too much pressure on them. You know, people look at that different. Some people say you want to just wind them to the boat as fast as you can, but I've always looked at it. The more time you take with them, don't get in a hurry. You're going to catch nine out of 10 of them. It's a nice one. when they do just barely get it. You have the right reel, the right rod, the right equipment, you're gonna put them in a live well. That is just a blast catching them on that bait. I'm gonna tell you straight up, I thought the RK55 original couldn't be outdone, but I've about decided this little 50 is even better. Crankbaits have always been a favorite among many pro anglers, and when you follow these tips and tricks that Mike McClellan has shared with us today, you'll reel in a ton of fish into your boat.